Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore, and welcome to this latest edition of the Black Financial and Fraud Report. We're now joined by Bill Black. He's an associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white collar criminologist, former financial regulator, author of The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One, and a regular contributor to the Real News. So, Bill, what do you have for us this week? Got a slightly different one. It's uh, why I would be fired if I were uh, a mile uh, to the west uh, in terms of where I worked in our neighbors in Kansas. So the uh, background is that uh, Kansas uh, has gone way beyond red in the red-blue state division. It's now an infrared state. And the Republican Party has become a party in Kansas of cannibals. Uh, in which they eat their own and only the absolute most uh, extreme folks are allowed to stay in office. In the midst of all of this, a, a professor at what that's called KU, the University of Kansas, did an angry and very intemperate tweet uh, in connection with the Navy Yard's uh, uh, attack uh, by the disgruntled employee that criticized heavily the NRA and, uh, and such. And the state legislature in Kansas went crazy uh, because they love guns. And in fact, one of their priorities was is changing the rules and the law so that people can have concealed weapons uh, in uh, universities, uh, in the classrooms and in the dorms with the drunken frat parties and all those good types of things. And so criticizing the NRA was really bad. And the state, and these were top people in the state legislature, were demanding that the professor be fired. But of course, he was tenured and they couldn't fire him. And this was intolerable. So the Kansas regents, who run all the universities, public universities in Kansas, have just, with no real discussion, and no involvement of faculty, effectively ended tenure for faculty and academic freedom. Uh, they adopted with right near the holidays, the last meeting, uh, with minimum publicity, um, a rule that uh, purports to apply to social media, but when you read social media, it turns out that anything posted online in written form or in YouTube uh, is, quote-unquote, use of social media. And as modern academics, we put almost all the things we write online, so essentially everything we do. Uh, and it says that the CEO, and by the way, it calls the president of these universities CEOs, and there's no pretense that they believe in tenure. There's no pretense they believe in academic freedom or vigorous debate or any of that stuff. This is the business model of the university. And the CEO is the boss, and the professors work for the boss, and they're supposed to do what the boss tells them. So under this new provision, if the boss, the CEO, gets upset with anything you do and decides that it is contrary to the best interests of the university, he can fire you. But not to worry, you get to file a grievance, which is decided by him. Right? Uh, and other provisions say that they can fire the professors if they say or do anything that gets in the way of the efficiency of the university or the harmony of the university. It's very zen, uh, kind of strange for evangelical Christians, but hey. Um, and all of these provisions are designed and are going to have the effect of chilling any controversial statements. So the kind, uh, you know, that I make all the time uh, about people who could be potentially large donors to the universities. You can also be fired, by the way, if you're simply arrested for a felony, even though you're not convicted. In fact, we're found innocent of the charges, and there's no provision for reinstating you uh, in those circumstances. Either they can just fire you if you say go to a protest, 
and get arrested by the police, and the police decide to overcharge it as a felony originally, boom, uh, you're out of there as a, a potential faculty member. So I've got a couple of articles already uh, explaining how this works. Uh, and it's clear that they adopted the most draconian provision their lawyers told they, them they could get away with. Hey, hey Bill, so is there, is there fear that this uh, you know, draconian measure, as you've called it, um, blow to academic freedom will be adopted in other universities across the country? Yes, Kansas is the home in many ways of the Koch brothers, uh, who are, of course, behind ALEC, uh, the American Legislative uh, Council, uh, that does all of the ultra-right-wing uh, legislation. And there is every reason to fear that this uh, Kansas is simply the trial bed and that if they get away with it in Kansas, they'll try to do this in every state. Now, so what's the response been um, at, the, at the university? Um, I assume the faculty is, is, uh, is, belongs to a union. Um, has there been an official, <laughs> uh, any, any, any reaction? Or what's, what's, the next, what's the next steps? Well, you assume incorrectly, okay. uh, because, in fact, unions are quite uh, rare uh, in academia. Uh, but uh, there is a AAUP, an Association of University Professors. Uh, they have come out against it. There's a Facebook page uh, at Kansas University, University of Kansas uh, in which opponents are uh, bringing together their arguments. But as I say, th this is something they deliberately dropped just before the holidays uh, and scampered out of town uh, because they knew it was going to be so controversial. And again, it is so vague. Uh, notice, the statement you make as a professor that the CEO can fire you for, A, it can be true, right? There can be no dispute that the statement you made is true. There can be no dispute that you made the statement in all good intent to try to make the world better and even to help your university. It doesn't matter. And there is no standard, or at least there's no meaningful standard, because it's right, whatever the CEO decides would <laughs> change the harmony or the efficiency or the best interest of the school. So there's no way of knowing what statement you could make or not make. Uh, that could get you fired. And of course, um, putting my legal hat on, that's precisely why First Amendment jurisprudence says we, the, you can't have these vague standardless, standardless standards because you will chill an enormous amount of speech. And of course, speech uh, at the universities is precisely where it's supposed to be most vigorous and open. Well, Bill, this certainly is alarming and we'll keep following this story. Thank you so much for that report. Thank you. You can follow us at The Real News on Twitter. Tweet me questions and comments at Jessel Noor. Thank you so much for joining us.